Welcome to the Teaching Selective Orientation Module. The objectives for this module are to review the goals and objectives for the course, uh, review some logistics, review some previous uh, student feedback and rationale for why things have changed or stayed the same, review some resources, and then recap with a take-home message. So by the end of the teaching selective, you should be able to demonstrate useful techniques for providing feedback as a clinical teacher, demonstrate useful techniques for teaching small groups uh, or on teams on the wards or in your ECMH, and demonstrate effective techniques for preparing uh, pre and giving a presentation. The teaching selective is a requ uh, requirement here through, uh, at Feinberg, uh, connected as a unit with a uh, Patient Persistence Society course, and it allows you the opportunity to develop your skills as uh, a clinical teacher and to, uh, in an area of providing feedback. You are provided this opportunity to teach uh, first and second year students in the clinical skills courses and in PBL uh, under the guidance of faculty and resident, uh, residents who are trained as uh, feedback providers for you. Successful completion of the teaching selective includes an opportunity to teach in either Phase 1A or Phase 1B clinical skills course. You teach 12 hours uh, in that program. Uh, you'll be videotaped one session and provided with formative feedback from a resident uh, who's been trained in providing feedback on your teaching skills. Students who are enrolled in the ECMH during the M4 year uh, will teach in their homes, but they will uh, sign up for one session, one clinical skills session in either Phase 1A or Phase 1B uh, to teach and you will be videotaped during that session and also provided resident uh, feedback from a resident who was assigned to you. Dr. Evans and I have discussed this um, and this change has been made based, we'll get to this later, based on feedback from uh, students uh, surveys from last year. But we would suggest if you can to do this taped session earlier in the academic year so that you can incorporate the feedback that you're given into teaching in your homes uh, in, the, in the year. In PBL, uh, if you're allowed to do PBL, you'll be assigned a faculty tutor and that faculty tutor will uh, provide you feedback throughout your, your PBL experience. Uh, you must complete at least six sessions Attendance at an orientation session is also required for your respective teaching opportunities. So whether you're in phase 1A or B clinical skills or in PBL, there'll be an orientation session for teaching that skill. Uh, during the time that you receive feedback, you can bring your independent learning plan and discuss it. Um, but then once that's finished and finalized, you can turn that in for, uh, to complete that portion of the teaching, uh, teaching selective assignment. So from an overall satisfaction perspective, this, I show you this data because I think it's important to see how we use this data to make changes, to keep things the same or change things. So overall, both groups of residents and students have enjoyed uh, teaching peers, uh, mentoring, mentoring their juniors uh, as a part of the teaching selective. There's a very positive component uh, of mentoring um, in the different levels, um, whether it's the M1, M2 with the, with the fourth year student or the fourth year with the, the resident. That's been a very positive um, theme that's come out of the satisfaction data. Um, teaching in the ECMH was also very positive. Uh, imparting knowledge or insights uh, is something that was re it's a big theme that was reported in last year's data along with reinforcing your own knowledge and re improving your own personal skills, whether it was cited as a skill as teaching or whether it was a clinical skill that you just reinforced because you taught um, something. So these are, uh, oh, real realization of personal growth and providing and receiving feedback were other uh, themes uh, that were positive in relation to this overall rating. Areas of improvement included for the ECMH students, they reported that they wanted to have more structure, feed, more feedback, and time in the CEC similar to the other students so they could get feedback and incorporate it into, into their um, teaching in their homes. So this change is the, how we modified um, 
to let you still teach in your home, but we're going to give you the one session teaching in the clinical skills setting so that you can be videotaped and receive feedback formally, same as the other students uh, in the clinical skills who sign up for phase one or AB. Another theme that comes through is not so much at this time of year, but at the end of the year when you're getting ready to graduate, students realize that it was they should have spent more time thinking about how they scheduled for their sessions. So um, what, what I mean by this is they should have either taught something they were interested in or taught this. There's continuity when you talk about continuity in teaching, continuity with the same group of learners or continuity with the same topic. So you might have been able to teach um, the chest exam the three times they offer, three times versus doing one of different, three different things. So that's something to think about when you um, choose your teaching uh, dates, when you select your dates. Now, doesn't mean to say that you're going to have the availability to do that, but if you can, it's an opportunity to gain confidence if you're teaching the same topic or if, you can, if there's a way to teach the same group of students to see how they progress. So that's something that comes through as an afterthought at the end of the year. Students report that, oh, I should have maybe scheduled differently or I should have put some more thought into scheduling. So um, you may want to think about that and talk to Claire um, if you can, if you haven't uh, approached your schedule in that, in that context. The other scheduling issue came up with the um, scheduling the resident feedback sessions. Now, they're extremely busy and you're extremely busy. So um, you will receive an email from Claire identifying your resident with the email address and they will receive one as well. Um, please, I'm gonna to talk to the residents about this too, but please take, be proactive and um, contact your resident and do the best you can with scheduling that session and adhering to um, the time that you can both meet. Um, again, this, this session is for your improvement. It's formative in nature. So it's not meant, the, the whole feedback process in the Teaching Selective is meant to help you improve. So embrace that, that opportunity um, with the residents because they have been trained on how to look at your video and how to provide you feedback on your teaching. This next slide uh, gives you an idea of the perceived importance. And overall, both groups value the Teaching Selective opportunity. The slide pertaining value of watching uh, the video and receiving feedback, I didn't include the data from this year because of the ECMH students. I think it confounded the results. Um, some students uh, commented that they weren't videotaped, but it looked like they, you know, the overall ratings um, the numbers were too big, so I didn't include it for this year. Uh, but as you can see, the residents um, find it a little more valuable than, than students. And that might be because it's, it's hard sometimes to watch yourself on tape. It might be because the residents are a little more senior and, they've, and, and they're not viewing it as themselves, but as somebody else, as, a, as an opportunity to teach formally in a, in a Feinberg class. So, so there might be some reasons for that. The career plans and teaching data. Now I show you this slide because uh, the residents who participate as feedback providers volunteer for this activity. They, this is an above and beyond what their regular expectations are in their department. So um, this is probably explains some of the extremely high satisfaction that I have from the residents in this pertaining career plans. So resources. Um, periodically, this, this video will be uploaded to a YouTube page. Uh, there may be other resources such as orientation for PBL. I have a separate video for that. I have a separate video that a student made last year for the ECMH students. And we'll, I'll be reviewing those. And, and any resources I have will link to, uh, that are video and content, will link to my um, YouTube page. So if I had to give a couple of items for you to really remember, some of the things I'd like you to, to walk away with is use the Teaching Selective as an opportunity to develop and hone your skills as a clinical teacher. You, at this particular point in time, you may not believe it, but you're gonna be a resident before you know it, and uh, you will be teaching 
your junior, uh, your juniors as a resident. So you may want to use this opportunity to practice. And even as a fourth year student, you're going to be, you know, teaching here at Feinberg. Um, other students have reported that they have used the teaching selective as an opportunity to discuss on the, the recruitment uh, trail because Feinberg is one of the few institutions that has a teaching requirement uh, as part of the formal curriculum. Other places have it where it's a voluntary activity. So Northwestern is different in that regard. Advice on your schedules and your logistics. Uh, schedule your sessions wisely. Think about how you want uh, to do your teaching. If, it, if, you, if there's an opportunity for you to have continuity with the same topic or continuity with the same level of learners, if we can, we'll try to help provide that. But you have to look at your schedule and what, what your schedule will allow. Um, prepare to teach. So uphold the expectations of the course. Um, teach to those to, to the goals and objectives of that, that course. If you're in clinical skills, use their checklist and teach the checklist. And look at and reference the teaching selective checklist. So there's a separate checklist for teaching selective, such as setting expectations, clear communication skills, you know, feedback, steps in feedback, and, and knowledge integration. So that, that's the other, the other uh, checklist. And then prepare for your resident feedback session. And do your best to understand that you both parties have busy schedules and respond to emails and do your best to, to accommodate a time to meet with your resident. Submit your independent learning plan and have fun. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the teaching selective and contact me if you have any questions.